Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about how hypothyroidism or low thyroid function can change your face. And I'm not just talking about some mild changes. I'm talking about it has the potential to dramatically change the structure of your face um, and the shape of your face and so on. So we're going to be talking about some of the ways that this can occur. Now, I will tell you right off the bat, one of the good things about this is that almost every single one of these things that we're about to discuss, these symptoms or signs, can be reversed as long as your thyroid is treated appropriately. So as long as you're optimizing your thyroid, which again, we'll talk about some of the ways that you can do this, um, and I have other videos on that topic, but as long as you're doing that, these things are almost always reversible. And let's face it, for a lot of people, our looks are important. Um, how you uh, appear to the rest of the world, that's something that matters to a lot of people. So this isn't necessarily about vanity, this is also just about managing your thyroid and making sure you look and feel the best that you can. So let's talk about number one here, and that is facial swelling. So all of these symptoms that we're gonna be talking about, all of these signs, they occur because your thyroid is not being treated appropriately. So in the case of all of these symptoms, it means that there's not an insufficient amount of thyroid hormone in your body, because if there was a sufficient amount of thyroid hormone, then these symptoms would resolve. So number one is facial swelling. Now, in general, this tends to be a more advanced sign. Okay, so what that means is that you're generally not gonna see it if you have mild to moderate disease. So the people who see this tend to have a little bit more resistant, um, they're more resistant to thyroid medication, maybe they are suffering from thyroid resistance, maybe they can't find the right type of thyroid medication that works best for them, maybe they're having issues with absorption, something is going on if you're experiencing facial swelling. Now for this particular symptom, this facial swelling occurs across the entire face. And it usually, that's not really a face, but you get the idea. So generally what happens is as you lay down and as you sleep at night, um, you don't have the force of gravity that's draining fluid from the top, from the top of your head on down. So when you wake up, you people who have this symptom, they look like they're puffy. They look like they have a swollen face when they wake up. Now, as they get up and walk throughout the day, that puffiness starts to drain as it gets taken back into your lymphatics and taken throughout the rest of the body and eventually it gets peed out or um, it gets incorporated back into the body. But facial swelling is something, um, and I think it's worth talking about here because it's a sign that something is going wrong. So you, if you have facial swelling and you're already taking thyroid medication, look into things like thyroid resistance, recheck all of your thyroid lab tests, make sure you're converting, etc. Do those sort of things to do your due diligence to figure out what's going on there. Now this one, is definitely more common, um, and it doesn't happen in advanced thyroid disease. In fact, it happens at pretty much all levels of um, thyroid severity, and that is eyebrow hair loss. Now, it's not just any particular type of thyroid hair loss. I'm gonna try and draw an eyebrow here to give you an idea of what this looks like. So these are supposed to be eyebrows, not an artist. Now, if, if we were to imagine, if, if you can imagine this, split your eyebrows into thirds. Now, the hypothyroidism eyebrow hair loss occurs in the lateral one-third of the eyebrow, so the, the tail end of the eyebrows right here. That is a very, very, very specific sign of hypothyroidism or low, or low thyroid function because most things that are going to cause eyebrow hair loss do not specifically target that area. They target the whole, the whole area, right? They're gonna cause hair loss or, or a, uh, diffuse hair loss across the entire eyebrow. If you have lateral one-third hair loss, that's almost always related to your thyroid because very few other things cause that particular issue. If you have diffuse eyebrow hair loss, that may be caused by something else, all right? So that doesn't necessarily mean it's your thyroid. Now, unfortunately, these, this type of hair loss is the first sign that you have, it's the first symptom that you'll notice you have um, a thyroid problem, and it's also the last symptom to resolve. So it takes forever to grow that lateral one-third of the eyebrows back. That's just the way it is. It's a really sensitive marker, really difficult to treat, and a lot of women suffer from this. My best recommendation is that you do not go around tweezing your eyebrows, because if you do this, you're, because of the thyroid, because of the way hypothyroidism reduces and slows down the hair growth cycle, it will take forever for that hair to grow back. So do not tweeze, avoid, avoid tweezing if at all possible. In addition, you might also experience generalized hair loss. So this occurs throughout the entire top of the head, right? We're talking mostly about the face, but I, I think hair, I think we can agree that your hair is part of the overall look of, of, your, of your person, right? So losing hair on the top of your head is still concerning and it still, I think, would change um, your face because if we're changing 
the hairdo that you have to have that does change your your physical appearance and how people perceive you. So I do think hair loss is still relevant to this whole concept of changing um, your face. Now, hypothyroidism, the type of hair loss that you can get with hypothyroidism is generally diffuse across the entire head. So it's not usually like patterned as it would be if you had male pattern baldness or alopecia, which is usually um, just in, a, in a one particular area. It's usually diffuse hair loss. So when you're going in the shower, you're combing your hair, or maybe you, you leave the shower, you see tons of hair just on the floor in the shower or inside of your comb. That's the type of hair loss that hypothyroidism causes. Um, and it just makes your hair look really thin. It slows down hair growth. And again, that is a symptom of not enough or not sufficient um, thyroid function inside of the body. And it does resolve. Um, it can be difficult, but for most, most people can get a complete resolution in their hair loss as long as they are looking at the right things and optimizing their thyroid. Next, we have acne. So acne, again, is never a normal sign. Um, it, it can sometimes be a fairly, we'll say common, but not normal if you're going through puberty or if you're in that age range. But it's never uh, normal for, let's say, a woman who hasn't had acne for 20 years and all of a sudden she turns 40 and starts developing acne. That is a strong indication that something is going on inside of the body. Now, the type of acne that's associated with hypothyroidism tends to be cystic and really deep. So it can have a hormonal pattern, which means it goes on the chin, um, maybe up here and then down um, the eyebrow as well. But it tends to be very sick, cystic and deep acne that is that doesn't typically respond to T4 only medications. Most of the time you're going to need T3. That's been my experience. If you have acne, which is not necessarily a common symptom related to your thyroid, because there's I wouldn't say most women suffer from this particular symptom, but the women who do have it, it tends to be hard to treat unless you're getting T3 thyroid hormone. So you can get that in Cytomel, Lyothyronine, even Armour Thyroid. But I tend to think the pure T3 medications tend to work best if that's the problem that you're suffering from, acne. Next, we have swelling around the eyes. So this is called periorbital edema. And this is a little bit different from the generalized facial swelling that we talked about. So generally, the, that, that type of hair, or that type of, sorry, not hair loss, that type of swelling can occur if your whole face is swollen, right? You will see it around the eyes a little bit. This is a little bit different because it's isolated just around the eyes. And this tends to be more common than the generalized face swelling. So this doesn't have to be as advanced, but we'll say it tends to occur in moderate conditions. And there's a lot of women who will, uh, so, same sort of thing, right? They'll wake up in the morning and they'll notice that their eyes are puffy and that they're just, you know, you can touch them and they're just a little bit puffy. But as they get up and as they walk around, that tends to fade. So keep an eye on the swelling around the eyes. Again, that's a sign that the thyroid function is not optimized. So if you can increase your thyroid hormone, that will do a lot of good to reduce this particular symptom. Um, next, we have enlargement of the eyes. So this is a little bit different. This one is called um, proptosis. So this is actually not, this is more of a bulging of the eyes coming out. Now, generally, this is associated with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease because it, there is an autoimmune component to it. But about 6% of people who have this particular um, condition, they have hypothyroidism. So it definitely can occur in hypothyroidism, but it is kind of rare. So we're talking about one in 20 or so. But to the people who do have it, it is particularly concerning because they don't, you know, it change again, it changes the structure of the face, essentially. Um, it makes the eyes look bigger than they really are. It's, the eyes actually stay the same. What happens is there's no place for the eyes to go and the tissues around the eyes get inflamed and enlarged and that just pushes the eyes forward. So the eyes haven't actually enlarged, but they appear to be enlarged um, based off the other things that are occurring. And then last, we have an increase in the size of the tongue and a broadening of the nose. So these you don't have to worry about typically, but I'm including them here. These are really, really advanced um, signs of hypothyroidism. So you, in the United States, you're generally not going to get to the point where you see these sort of side effects. These are the sign of side effects that you, type of side effects that you see in third world countries because people can go years without getting their thyroid treated. In the United States, you're gonna get caught before this typically happens. And if that occurs to you anyway, you're gonna be going in and saying, hey, what's going on here? But I am going to include it here um, for completeness sake. Now, for most of you listening to this, the things you really need to worry about are the eyebrow hair loss, the generalized hair loss, the acne, the swelling around the eyes, and maybe the enlargement of the eyes depending on your particular situation. 
but we'll say probably these ones are gonna be the most common. Now, if you wanna get rid of these, remember, you have to optimize thyroid hormone. That's what TH stands for. You can do that with thyroid medication. You can do that with thyroid supplements. You can do that with natural therapies. Doesn't really matter what you do, but make sure you are increasing thyroid hormone. And as you do that, guess what's gonna happen? These are all going to decrease. So that's really what you need to focus on, that thyroid hormone. And it's a sign that whatever you're doing is not working. Even if you're taking thyroid medication, you could be taking your thyroid medication faithfully. You're either not in the right type, try a different kind of thyroid ho hormone or thyroid medication, use natural therapies, do whatever you have to, but optimize that thyroid function and you'll see an improvement. So if you have any questions about these particular symptoms or maybe you're experiencing others, feel free to leave them in the comments below. This isn't a complete list. These are just the most common that I see along with I think some of the more concerning ones that tend to occur in the advanced uh, stages. So that's all I have for you guys. If you enjoyed this, make sure you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you feel better. So that's all I have and otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.